my recent trip to the emergency room got me a little bit of medical attention, as well as a ghost story. And then we take a look at the Christmas Day bombing in Nashville, Tennessee, as conspiracy theorists rush to explain what happened that day. Is it possible that the truth is stranger than fiction? Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. Hope you guys had an amazing holiday season. We got a lot of stuff to cover today. So first off, let's introduce our newest Patreon supporter, <laughs> you know, some things never change. Probably going to mispronounce his name. Lancanian Lifter. And here comes Lancanian Lifter. He's lifting stuff. He's just picking random stuff up at my place. Dude, dude, put that down. Yeah, you can pick that up. I don't even know what you're holding. But in my imagination, it's something valuable. But you're allowed to lift that because you're the Patreon supporter. If you can't support the Patreon, that's fine too. Just help spread the word about the show. It really, really helps out a lot. So Lancanian, as you're, <laughs> you're juggling stuff, you're Lancanian juggler. You're juggling all my Bigfoot statues. I'm going to give you the keys. I'm going to throw the keys into the juggling mix. I'm going to give you the keys to the Jason Jalopy. We're actually going to drive up to Providence Hospital because that was where I was recently treated. And I'm going to use this story to kind of also go over some things that may change about the show. Nothing drastic. A lot of people... Because obviously there was a health scare, and my heart's fine. I actually am going to see a cardiologist in a couple days. But right now, everything seems fine. You can tell there's a little bit of worry. (laughs) There's a little bit of worry in my voice, but everything seems to be fine. And so coming out of this whole thing on the other... This isn't the first time I had this. I had the AFib last, the previous year, around the same time. I'm starting to think almost like it's us (laughs) it's us traveling through realities. Like the first AFib took us into the year of the coronavirus and all the bizarreness of 2020, and the second AFib was all of us going back to a normal timeline. That's what I believe. Now we're back into normal land. We'll actually get into that with our second story of the day. That's really... I'm doing great. I'm doing really fine. The cardiologist thing will go great, or they'll have things that they need me to do, but just wanted to give you guys that update of what was going on. But... While I was talking, Land Canyon Lifter was, he picked up, he's walking around with the Jason Jalopy, we're all in it. He's going to drop us off at the Providence Hospital up here. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience. Now, not so much, I'm not going to go through all the rigmarole of what happened at me at the doctor's office, but there's a ghost story. There's a ghost story involved. So, <laughs> it's actually kind of short, but it's involved. So, when I went to the hospital, I went, I'm going to make, I kind of got to set it up, but... There's a true crime story involved a little. (laughs) I didn't steal a bunch of medical equipment that they haven't found out yet. No, what happened was I went up there and they're treating me. My heart was an AFib. It was beating like 150 beats per minute. And everyone's just kind of like, no, 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 no. They're just kind of, they don't, they're great staff there. Some of them may be listening to this because I'll get into that in a second. But they're really good. But they're like, it's not a big deal. This is totally standard. People get these things, especially when they're drinking a ton of caffeine. But I'm in there, I got my little robe on, it's completely miserable, Um, scared, obviously, because I, I, you know, who who likes to be in the emergency room with health health stuff? But I always ask, every time, like, nurse walks in, doctor, I've asked doctors this, I've asked everyone these questions, have you guys ever seen a ghost? That's a question everyone loves. If you ever find yourself in a situation like an awkward social encounter, you're at a dinner party, you're at a ghost hunter society... You're out with people you don't know. That's a really good icebreaker. Paranormal story. Everyone loves paranormal stories. That's why shows like this resonate with people. People love ghosts and Bigfoot and UFO. Even if they don't... Bigfoot's a little more dicey. Because a lot of people think it's like a scientific thing. That it's a, a, a creature that's running around. Or it's not. They think it's foolish. But usually I'll ask hunters. If people are hunters or campers, outdoorsmen. I'll ask them if they've ever seen Bigfoot. But at a hospital, you <laughs> Have you ever seen Bigfoot? Has an eight foot tall simian ever walked in here? And the answer would always be no. I would always ask nurses, have you ever seen a ghost? And so I'm at the emergency room and I this is like hour two that I'm stuck there. I've watched a ton of episodes of Special Victims Unit. That's what I chose to watch in the hospital. And I had a nurse go, oh yeah, yeah. She goes, I, she goes, to be fair, I've never seen a ghost. But she goes, the way this hospital used to be laid out, 
was that the nurses would wear little monitors on their clothing. So you could track where the nurses were in the building. The reason why, it's not just because some pervert runs the place, some voyeur's like, ooh, Nancy's in the bathroom. <laughs> Better go to my peephole. No, it's so they can say, that might have been reason, but that's not the official reason. They would say, oh, Nancy is in Ward 1, and we're getting a call on, like, line, or again, like, one of those safety buttons or whatever, there's beep, 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 things are, Roadrunner, Roadrunner's getting a checkup. You know those little buttons you press to get help? And they go, that way they can page Nancy and say, Nancy, go to room two or something like that. I don't know, the she didn't, she didn't give me the employee handbook on how it's actually done, but she said the nurses used to have monitors on them so they could tell where they were at in the hospital. And she goes, there was a room that was really close to the like nurses station. And that's where they put people who weren't doing too well. People that they knew they had to get to quickly. Because, you know, they they may not make it. These are people who are going to die soon or not at all. <laughs> or they would go home. Like you don't know. It's a hospital. And she said, so this was a room where a lot of people had passed away. A lot of people had passed away in this. You like this uplifting? You like this uplifting start of episode of season 13? She said that sometimes, like late at night, it was super spooky. They would see a nurse monitor go off in that room. It would show that a nurse was in that room, but they could kind of look into that room. No nurse. Not only was there no nurse, nobody was in there. There wouldn't even be a patient in there. But the system that was designed to tell if someone was in a certain area malfunctioning? Who knows? It wouldn't say that a particular nurse was there. It would just say there is a nurse in there. There'd be a little monitor. Doo -doo, would pop up on their hunt for Red October. <laughs> hunt for Red October. Whatever that is. Sonar. Doo -doo, and it would say someone was in the room. So a little spooky ghost story. It's interesting that it was... You You would think that if it's triggering that a, a, a staff member's in there... That it may not be the ghost of someone who passed away in that room. It could be the ghost of a nurse who had passed away, maybe retired. Now I'm making this one, <laughs> fictionalizing this part. But long time ago, on that very day, on that very day I was in the emergency room, a kindly old nurse died. And every midnight or whatever, she comes back to check on patients. So I thought that was kind of an interesting story. I thought that was an interesting ghost story. And I do, whenever I go to the doctor... Spend a lot of time with the doctor. I always ask him about ghost stories. Here's where the, the other component comes from. It's kind of a funny story. And like I said, this episode's going to go a little long, but I'll try to keep it brief. They had to put me under to electrocute me. What they did was they did a cardioversion thing where they basically shocked my heart. They had to shave my chest. I'm not a particularly hairy person. They have dealt with Bigfoot there. Bigfoot has been there before. But I'm not a particularly hairy person, but they still have to shave my chest. And they go, this is what we're going to do, sir. We're going to put you under. We're going to electrocute you. Hopefully you'll get superpowers. We don't know. So it's a one in ten chance you might become a supervillain. But most likely you'll just hop up. <laughs> not literally. They, they explain it like this. We're going to put you under. You'll be under for about 60 seconds. What they do to you is they just put you under for 60 seconds. And they go, by the time you get out of it, we're already taking the stuff off. So, I'm obviously super... I've never been put under before. Actually, that's not fair. I got put under once for a colonoscopy and once for this. But you're nervous because basically people are going to remove your consciousness. And at one point, the guy goes, your body will be awake, but your brain will be asleep. I'm like, ah, oh, it's kind of creepy. Like, I know that's that's basically normal. That, I do that every night, but not chemically. So, I'm nervous, and I'm sitting in this room... At this point, I've been there for five hours, and I've got up a couple times to go pee. You know where this story's going. <laughs> Long-time listeners of the show know where this story's going. I've gotten up a couple times to pee, but I hadn't pooped the whole day. And I had to poop. But I didn't want to tell them I had to poop. I'm just thinking, I'm just going to get this over with. They're going to electrocute me, and then I can go home, and I can poop to my heart's content. Which would be one time, which would just be once. So I'm sitting there. There's no ghost, but just imagine there's a ghost. <laughs> just for the sake of the co continuity of the podcast, there's a ghost in the corny corner. Samara is standing there singing lullabies, which is infinitely more frightening than the story I'm about to tell. I have to poop really bad. 
And the doctor comes in and he's like telling me all this stuff. We're going to put you under. We're going to bring in a specialist. He's on his way. We're going to put you under and stuff like that. Hey, do you have any questions? And I go, am I going to poop? <laughs> am I going to poop when you electrocute me? And he goes, what? No, no, you're not. You're sir, <laughs> sir, you're not going to poop. But he didn't know. He didn't know what he didn't know what I was feeling, and I didn't want to say anything. I don't know why I didn't. But I just imagine, like, if I have to poop and I'm getting electricity shot through my heart, won't that make me poop even more than I have to right now? But I don't say anything. So then, like, 10, 15 minutes pass. And at this point, like, they're getting ready to do this. So I can no longer have the freedom to kind of get up and move. The specialist is coming in and all this stuff. And I'm like, great. So the specialist comes in. The doctor comes in. There's a nurse. And, and he's like, okay, so we're going to put you, we're going to give you this drug. We're going to put you to sleep. We're going to electrocute you. And I go, that's all well and good. I've already been told that stuff. But I have a question. Am I going to poop? And at that point, the doctor goes, dude, you're not going to poop. You're not going to poop at all. And the nurse goes, even if you did poop, who cares? You're at a hospital. We deal with poop all the time. And I was like, I just don't want to poop when you electrocute me. At that point, the doctor <laughs> the doctor gave me some drug to, he goes, I'm going to give you something to cal- calm you down, which was great, which was great because it was a stressful situation. <laughs> like, Jason, get to the ghost. There's a ghost in the corner. But here's the true crime element. I thought this was interesting because at this point, I'm really scared, right? I'm really scared. And I thought to myself, as the doctors are walking around me, they're getting ready to put me under. I go, why are you scared? Like I've, and I I remember having this exact thing as I'm strapped down. I wasn't strapped down. (laughs) It wasn't that dramatic. They give me a leather belt to bite on. I remember sitting there and I go, Jason, you've walked into drug dealers' houses over and over again, over and over again. And not guys you knew not like your friend who sold weed on the side (laughs) like straight up drug dealers houses and i go why are you scared of being electrocuted and it was a very very at that point it might have been the anti-anxiety medicine they gave me but i think it was more than that i think it was the fact that i was able to talk myself out of being afraid they put me under i remember as i was being put under i was totally silent because i was like i'm not scared anymore I'm a little nervous when I poop my pants, but that we'll deal with that when I wake up. And I remember everyone started to turn into watercolor paintings. The drugs were taking effect. And I remember as the nurses were walking around, this was a routine thing for them. They had done one just a few hours earlier to somebody else. Everybody began to look like moving watercolor paintings. And I remember saying, are you cartoons? The next thing I know... I'm waking up. People are taking straps off. Not not straps, Jason. You're not not at Arkham Asylum. They're taking monitors off me. They're taking off sticky tapes and things like that. And the reason why I wanted to tell you the story, because I wanted to reassure you guys of something. As I'm coming out of this drug-induced stupor, my heart is back to normal. I was just electrocuted a couple seconds ago, and I'm coming back out of the sleep. The nurse is standing next to me, and she says, what was the name of that podcast again? Dead Rabbit Radio? In the moments when my consciousness was shut off, in the moments where I had no rational control over what I was saying, I was talking about this show. When you broke Jason Carpenter down to the essence of a a comatose zombie, the only thought in my head was this show. The only thought in my head was was you guys. This show is here to stay. That's what this is all about. This show is me. This show is you. This show is for us. And it's here to stay. Barring some sort of freak accident, five years, ten years, this show is here to stay. I want to reassure you guys of that. And sometimes I have to reassure myself of that because when I get to those 50 episodes and I'm at the end of the season, I'm burned out. But that taught me a lesson that even though sometimes I get burned out and even so sometimes during my break, I think maybe I won't do the show again. Maybe the show's done. At the end of the day, when I was knocked out completely and I didn't even know what I was saying, I was talking about the show. This show is here to stay. Land Canyon, let's toss you the keys to the Carpenter Copter. We're leaving behind Providence Hospital and we are headed out to Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> 
one more se- one more segue before I get to Nashville, Tennessee. During my break, I was watching a ton of stuff. And again, having two weeks off was amazing. So thank you guys for allowing me to do that. I know the timing wasn't perfect. I know the holidays is hard for people. It's just the way that the dice fell. I ended up watching a bunch of stuff. I became reacquainted with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm I didn't I didn't really watch the last two seasons of that show, so I'm watching that. It's a great show. Rewatching Twin Peaks for the third time. My friend Sabine's never seen it. If you haven't seen Twin Peaks, which Buffy's good, but Twin Peaks is infinitely better. Watch Twin Peaks. Watched a ton of movies. We got a ton of Dead Rabbit recommends coming up this week. So it was really relaxing time. I really had a good time relaxing. But while this was going, while I was sitting watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I've watched Angel. I know Angel's better. It's a hundred times better. But I've watched Angel like three times all the way through. Buffy, I've never really seen all the way through. Uh, first couple seasons. Absolutely. I've, anyways, anyways. The point is, is that I never saw the last two seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Some of the episodes. But while this was going on, uh, there was that bombing in Nashville. And I remember the whole time I was on vacation, I was still obviously reading the news every single day. And I'm still kind of putting stuff aside for possible stories to do in the future and i saw the nashville bombing and i started taking notes on it and i go ah, you know it's a tragic story a man detonated a bomb in nashville and some buildings got damaged and communications for the area went down for a couple days weird but i'm a child of the 80s it's not weird if you're my age um, not saying that, not saying that, there, that communications are always down and we lived in a Mad Max world, but when I was a kid, I'd watch the news and there'd be bombings in, in Britain all the time. You had the IRA bombing stuff in Britain and you had tons of, you had the Marine base being bombed. What was that in, uh, Libya or Syria? It's Lebanon, Lebanon. So that's where that happened. So I'm used to car bombs and things like that in the news. Uh, maybe it's unusual because it happened in the United States. But it didn't seem super newsworthy to me. So I read a couple articles on it. I just go, well, if, if you know, it's mainstream news. I usually don't cover mainstream stuff. And then the conspiracy theory stuff started to pour in about the bomber. And I got a little more interested in it. Again, totally tragic that this event happened. We're going to break it down in a second. But this is an overview just to show how the story evolved. Because I think it's important. I, I was reading it and I was seeing the stuff that the bomber had these, may have had these beliefs or those beliefs and things like that. But then we saw another evolution of the story. And at that point, I really started to pay attention to it. I really started to dig into it. Fascinating story that came out of Nashville, Tennessee, that I think most most of you may not have heard of. So very, very fascinating stuff. Land Canyon Lifter is flying that Carpenter Copter over to Nashville, Tennessee, December 25th, 2020, we're in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. There's a man known as Anthony Quinn Warner. He's 63 years old, and by all accounts, a, a pretty nice guy. People have talked about him because they've they've been able to track him down. All of his like co-workers and were like, yeah, you know, it was this standard thing where they're like, we never would have thought he would have done it. That's usually what we hear with like mass shootings or bombings and things like that. So it's shocking to everyone. And really, even you may have never met him. It's shocking just because on this morning in this neighborhood, there is an RV just parked there. That's not weird. You're allowed to park your RV in in places. That's not against the law. But there's gunshots in the area. (laughs) Old Western revolver gunshot noises are going off. And people, of course, call the police. Hey, someone's out here shooting. The cops show up. And at that point, the RV begins to play a pre-recorded message saying, a bomb is going to go off in 15 minutes. This message is repeated on a loop. And then every so often, the song, Downtown, I can't sing the song, that's all you get, it's already stuck in your head just by me saying, Downtown, begins playing from this RV, and then it'll go back to the warning. So cops actually begin knocking on doors, trying to get people out. Because there's like residential buildings there, there's a lot of businesses. The reason why this is, that's not news, that's just a recording playing in public. I mean, it would be alarming, it might be local news, but eventually... The RV explodes. Huge explosion comes out of this RV, and communications for the entire region go down. So they have 911 operators. Uh, their services go down, which you really need them in this type of situation. Uh, cell, cell phones are affected. Internet is affected and all of these things. This is a massive explosion. It's not until December 31st, so it's not until six days later, 
if you don't have a calendar handy, it's not until six days after December 25th that the feds, because the FBI swooped in, it wasn't until they left that we actually saw the extent of the damage. The early reports was that there was one fatality, and that was Anthony Quinn Warner. And they were able to determine him from remains found in the RV. At first, they, just, they didn't know what was going on, but apparently they were able to find remains, and they were able to track back. I, I'm sure they were able to find VIN numbers and things like that for what was in the RV. They were able to get DNA samples from the family, and they find out it is this man, Anthony Quinn Warner. Now they're saying that a cadaver dog, originally they're reporting no other casualties. Now they're saying a cadaver dog did pick up on the scent in a building that's been damaged. So there may be another fatality here. The police did their best to try to get people out of the buildings. And I'm sure other people heard the, <laughs> you know, heard the broadcast and weren't like, well, I'm staying here until the cops show up. I'm sure people were, were just scattering out. It would have been more damaging. I was thinking about this had it not been on Christmas Day. And had it been pre or now we're looking at a post COVID world, it'll be pretty soon that we're not going to have to have these lockdowns. Pre- or post-COVID world, people would have been in all these buildings and restaurants and things like that. 45 businesses were damaged by this. Now, that includes everything from a window being busted out to it being leveled. There was actually two buildings that were so damaged, they're going to have to be knocked down. And seven of them are considered unsafe to go into until considerable repairs are made to them. I hate to say this. But two of the places that were damaged um, was the AT&T building seems to be the main target, we're, we're guessing. But um, an old spaghetti factory um, was destroyed. That's my favorite restaurant. And a Hooters. So, so, uh, domestic terrorists, domestic terrorists don't understand collateral damage. Hooters. What type of world do you live in where a Hooters and an old spaghetti factory can be destroyed in one fell swoop. I don't know. Maybe they just had their windows blown out. But still, any damage is too much. So who is Anthony Quinn Warner? This is really interesting because we don't know. This may end up being something like the Las Vegas uh, shooting where the guy was, I don't remember his name, and I could care less to remember the names of mass killers and things like that. But he was the guy who was shooting out of the hotel and, and shot a bunch of people. Well, We'll never know why he did that. There's a lot of questions over what happened that night. And there's theories about international terrorism. There's theories about like SEAL Team 6 uh, fighting off some bad guys from some other some other SEAL Team 7. They're fighting each other. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about that. But we'll never really know why that guy did that. This guy, originally they were saying there was a source that talked to the Daily Mail. And they said he believed in the 5G conspiracy theory. And that's why he targeted the AT&T building. Apparently, Anthony Quinn Warner's dad uh, died in 2011. And he worked for an AT&T subsidiary. And the source said that Anthony blamed 5G for that. There is no confirmation. for. I did a lot of research on this. Once I started... To peel back the onion, if you look at the show notes for this episode, there's a ton of them, and they're not as well organized, because I was just grabbing sources left and right on this. But they're all there. Everything I'm talking about is all there. The Daily Mail, a lot of people were reporting the 5G conspiracy theory. There's no proof of that outside of a source close to the investigation told the Daily Mail that. That has not been confirmed by anyone else. That It may be true, not the 5G conspiracy thing, that it's real, because that's dumb, but... It could be true that he believed that, but there we have no proof of that. Apparently, that's a working theory of why he chose this building. There is also a theory going around now that writings online may be linked to Anthony Quinn Warner, saying that he believed reptilians were taking over the planet and he went to a local state park to fight aliens or to hunt aliens or something like that. Again, we don't have any proof of that. That source is saying that writings may be linked to that. Now, that actually, I was able to find more sources. That actually, I think, it, again, I don't know if it's true, but it's not just a single source close to the investigation. That's being reported more closer to fact at, than the 5G conspiracy thing. But there's still, we don't know why he did this. And we don't know if he actually wrote those things about the aliens. There's a bunch of weird stuff. He owned two houses he gave to some woman in L.A. Because in Tennessee, you can give a house to someone and they don't even have to know it. 
She's cooperating with the FBI, but when journalists ask, well, how do you know this guy? She doesn't say anything. And that's really doesn't matter to the the story. It doesn't seem. It's just an odd detail. Like, why is he giving these houses? Well, we know why he's giving the houses away, because he's about to blow himself up. But why her? We don't know. And it's probably a minute detail, but I wanted to mention it just for all of the weird labyrinth we're going through on this one. Apparently, he did tell a neighbor that, quote, Nashville and the world is never going to forget me, unquote. And his ex-girlfriend in 2019 had gone to the police and said he was attempting to build a bomb. And the police kind of looked into it, but nothing really came of it, or they didn't really look into it. They're saying they did their best, and there's reports coming out. Sources close to the investigation on them are saying they didn't really look into it. Here's the thing, that in and of itself, that story in and of itself is what I investigated first. And I thought it's weird, but it was being so talked about in the mainstream media. When the Obviously when it happened, that perked my eyes, uh, is that a thing? Perked my ears. And then I thought, uh, hopefully no one's dead. Hopefully it's just a, a bomb went off. Hopefully it's just one of those bombs that doesn't kill anybody. And then it came out that it was mostly a sui- most likely a suicide bomb, and that was kind of like, oh, that sucks. And then I just read recently about someone else may have died. So again, that sucks. But if, uh, just a bizarre story. A guy who believes in conspiracy theories does this thing. Weird, but it's national news. I, I wasn't planning on talking about it. It wasn't until I started really digging into it when another layer comes into it. And that's why this episode's so long. Land Canyon, keep flying that carpenter copter. We are going to leave behind Nashville, Tennessee. We're headed out to a little place. Long and short time listeners will know as the Dark Outpost. <laughs> Darkoutpost.com is a website that I recently learned about. Who I think it was Dr. Hare, Mr. Hare. I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't remember if you have a doctorate. I, don't, I didn't write it in my notes. I think it's I think it's Dr. Hare, and if it's not, it should be. Recently, I got a suggestion from Dr. Hare about uh, darkoutpost.com, the best website named after a post-apocalyptic novel involving vampires. Darkoutpost.com, we learned recently that George Soros cloned himself to interfere with the election. It's great! Darkoutpost.com, I check it every day now. So, of course, I'm just on my daily check-in to see what Dark Outpost is up to. I find that they have dove 10 toes into the conspiracy theory about the Nashville bombing. Now, here's the thing. I pretty much gave you all the stuff we know. So what's the conspiracy theory there? Well, that's why this is important to talk about. That the story gets so unintentionally bizarre that I truly think my AFib did send us into an alternate reality. To be fair, darkoutpost.com isn't the only one repeating this. I've also stumbled across uh, Reddit posts, and um, uh, there's another website called whatdoesitmean.com that outpost.com is constantly sending me to. What does it mean actually sounds like a science daily type of thing. Uh, There's a website I go to called How and Why that constantly talks about aliens invading Earth. But every so often they'll have a story about you know, what would a magnet do on Mars or some science stuff? What does it mean actually sounds like it would be in that vein, but it's not. It's in the total ridiculous vein that we're about to plunge into, like a heroin needle sticking into a junkie's arm. Did you know? That's where we're going with this guy. Anthony Quinn Warner. Anthony Q. Warner. Now, <laughs> so we've already dropped out the N. The U-I-N-N. Anthony Q. Warner. Let's drop a few more letters. Anon Q. Warn. You see, this man never existed. This was a message. I don't know what the message was, but it was a warning to Q? A QAnon? But but if you... if you, His name's QAnon, but if you change it up... That was enough to get this video taken off of YouTube. But if you change it up, it's Anon Q. Warn. If you can't hear that, that's the sound of me shaking my head. This is where it gets weird. We already have an interesting story to begin with, but now we see his name is just a code. That message, that pre-recorded message talking about the bomb going off, someone decided to play it backwards, and I am going to play it backwards for you as well, right now.
the RV... <laughs> the RV was a satanic message to the world. Again, I don't know... What's interesting about this, there's so many conspiracy theories about it already, and they're already colliding heads. It took a while between 9-11 was an inside job, Bush let it happen, to 9-11 was an inside job, thermite, like internal explosions, to 9-11 was an inside job, holographic planes. It took a while for that to happen. We're what, eight days out from this? A non-Q warn, but let's forget that. That that conspiracy theory's already been pushed aside. The RV was sending a satanic message. Now, I played it backwards for you. When you when, obviously, when you watch the video that I watched that you can't see, you can if you go to the show notes, but I'm not hiding it from you. You can't really tell what they're saying. That backwards message apparently says the most sinister thing of all. I can't believe that any RV, any RV, any sentient RV would ever say this. That message, if you play the bomb countdown backwards, it says, Are you ready for a Merry Christmas for all? Isn't that spooky, right? Did it really say that? It's funny because when I heard it, I'm reading the text, and I go, yeah, it does kind of sound like that. It'd be interesting to know what you guys thought, because you guys are just listening to the audio. So we got a, we got a QAnon already in this, because they don't, they don't want me to cover it on my show and get my channel struck. We have that conspiracy theory involved. We have, the, we have Satan worshipers um, wishing us a Merry Christmas. How dare, how dare they? And then you have the theory that the RV didn't explode, that there was another bomb there, that the fact that, that there was an RV with the remains of this guy that was like hologram or fake or that it just happened to be there. They keep showing me photos of two RVs saying, look, they're not the same RV. And I go, well, I could show you a picture of two Batmobiles and tell you they're different Batmobiles. One's from one movie and one's from the other movie. I don't know the reference for those photos. You can keep showing me a picture of an RV in a backyard. I guess someone did like a Google drive-by of his neighborhood and took a snapshot of an RV. But, okay, <laughs> there's, there's not only one RV in all of Nashville, Tennessee, is what I'm trying to say. So there's that stuff going on. Then they're saying that there's a video footage. There's a lot of video footage of it, but one of the video one of the videos is farther away and you see something shoot up into the air briefly before the explosion. And then there's a massive explosion. So, I was watching this video and they said that's the telltale sign of a thermobaric weapon where it shoots up and then explodes in the sky so it does more damage. Now, I I don't know if that's how thermobaric weapons work. I'm not an explosives expert. It's possible that, well, first off, it's possible that it's artifacts from the video. There's only one video angle that's actually showing that thing. It's possible that that was some sort of primer explosion before the RV actually blew up. But I don't know. I don't know. We know this thing did blow up. It did blow up in front of an AT&T building. Some people are saying that you see something, you do see something shoot up in the sky. But again, I don't know if that's an artifact for the video, if it's a primer charge, if it's some sort of thermobaric weapon. Even if it was that, it doesn't mean he couldn't build something that would shoot up and explode in the sky. Who knows? I don't know that. I do know this. Though I do. I can bet money on this. I will bet my podcast on this. The main conspiracy theory, the one that I've seen reported the most in the fringe media, space lasers. Space lasers. <laughs> space lasers destroyed... Old Spaghetti Factory and Hooters. That is the main conspiracy theory that's coming out of this. It's called Directed Energy Weapons. Here's the thing. So I had to look this stuff up. I've heard of Directed Energy Weapons before. It is a technology they're working on. Officially, they say Directed Energy Weapons won't be available until the mid-2020s. They're going to put it on drones to shoot down missiles. I know that, and we all know this, it almost goes without saying, that the military has technology that we don't know about. So, it wouldn't shock me if there are currently drones flying around that have the ability to shoot directed energy weapons, or do weapons. <laughs> it didn't come from space! It wasn't an orbital weapons platform, is the theory going around. That there was some sort of 
satellite orbiting the planet Earth that shoots a laser down to damage 47 buildings, knock out a couple windows, hit an RV, which is pretty good aim to hit this AT&T Center. What I find so fascinating about that is they use the same video. Now, in the video, you clearly see something shoot up. Again, I don't know what it is. It could be a hundred different things. But they'll show a video of something shooting up, and they go, look, space laser. Which, again, I'm not a scientist. I'm definitely not a weapons expert. But I do know that stuff fired from above doesn't launch from the ground. This is when I started to really dig into the story. When I saw this conspiracy theory pop up. Because I go, that is so outlandish. That is so dumb. I find it hilarious. <laughs> I find it super funny that people are pushing that. And it's so interesting because you had What Does It Mean's website talk about the thermobaric weapon. But by the time it got to Dark Outpost, even though they were referencing What Does It Mean's website... Orbital Weapons Platform. And that's what I was seeing already going around on Reddit. Orbital Weapons Platform. Which is completely ridiculous. There's a million ways you could blow stuff up. First off, cram a bunch of explosives in an RV, drive it down the street. That would be the easiest way to do it. The second easiest way to do it would be like missile launcher or... I'm not going to break down all the Looney Tune ways, drop an anvil on it. But you don't need to go to space. Maybe for the anvil. But you don't need to go to space. I don't know why there's always a rush in conspiracy theories to do the the most absurd possible thing. The story itself is already weird enough. And there's so many questions. Why he did it? Why did he do it? Now, we don't know if it's the 5G thing. That's the most... If we go off of what we know, let, let's assume these things are true. That he didn't believe reptilians are taking over the planet that his dad did work for an AT&T subsidiary and he died of dementia. I don't, You can't die of dementia, but he died of something and had dementia. And you have this man, Anthony, blaming the telecommunications industry for that and believing in the 5G conspiracy theory, wanting to blow up an AT&T building. That's possible. That's possible. We have a quote from the Metro Police Chief John Drake. And he, this is a direct quote. This is not sources say. Um, Metro Police Chief John Drake said that, as far as they know, Anthony Quinn Warner was hanging out with, quote, crackheads and drug addicts, unquote. So one thing we've learned about on this show, and I think one thing most people just kind of know, <laughs> they know from the age of 12 up, that conspiracy theory and drug use tend to go hand in hand. Most conspiracy theorists aren't drug users, but... Most drug users are conspiracy theorists. Like, I think there is that Venn diagram. If you're a drug user, you most likely are attuned into the flights of fancy of these things. A lot of us, we either believe them or we find them fascinating or we believe some of them. But drug users, I've never met a drug user who goes, what? Oh, pff, no way. JFK, that was totally Lee Harvey Oswald. And we totally landed on the moon and the earth is round. Drug users tend to be conspiracy theorists. That could be why. It could just be a random location. He could have really hated Hooters. Who knows? We don't know. But that is not stopping the good people at DarkOutpost.com <laughs> from theorizing. So why did he do this according to DarkOutpost.com? There's two theories. Again, all these conspiracy theories are fighting for attention. The first one is that the at t building was an NSA building. NSA is the National Security Agency. They have listening posts. There was a big expose in the media. Edward Snowden released these documents. They have listening posts. They do work with AT&T. AT&T is a very important part of the telecommunications industry. AT&T is a, what they call a friend of the NSA. They're willing to work with them. During this whole data dump that Edward Snowden gave us, we do see that they do have some facility. They do have a facility. It was specifically listed as a VOIP interchange facility in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, it doesn't say that it was this AT&T building, but some people are saying, darkoutpost.com, that this building worked with the NSA. That wouldn't shock me at all. That wouldn't shock me at all. What would surprise me, though, is if that was your target, why you would hit them. Now, sure, communications were down for, like, a couple days. You couldn't call 911. And I think even they got that working well, and the internet was kind of slow and things like that. 
It's not one of their main centers, though. Their main centers are... I don't want to dox the NSA. I don't want to list them off, but Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Los Angeles, New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. Those are their... If you really wanted to... Again, I'm not giving you guys... I'm not giving you guys advice of where to point your space anvil that Wiley e. Coyote is up there ready to drop. But if that was the goal, right... If you're going to hit the NSA, you would hit one of those places. So it doesn't make any sense that that's where they're going. And even the conspiracy theorists realize that's dumb. That's dumb. Like, sure, you can point at a map and say somewhere in the capital of Tennessee, there is a building that works with the NSA, which I'm going to tell you guys right now, there, <laughs> there ain't just one. There's buildings all over the place that are working with the government or our government buildings in the skies and things like that. But this was this idea that this was a hardened structure and this guy wanted to blow it up with a thermobaric missile or space laser, things like that. That didn't really catch on because it doesn't make any sense. Because, again, you would go after a main target. I feel like. This episode has become me talking about me going to the hospital and then the next 50 minutes giving advice to met to domestic terrorists. That is not the point of this episode. But the conspiracy theories, again, already shifted. We're only eight days into this. Did you know that days before the attack, days before Christmas, YouTube, go ahead and just shut <laughs> YouTube, go ahead and just shut the channel down right now. Just shut it down. No, keep doing the podcast. Did you know that a couple days before Christmas, Dominion voting machines were moved to an AT&T facility in Nashville? If you don't know or you don't care about American politics, which is about 6.5 billion people, care nothing about American politics, Dominion voting systems are tied into the narrative that Donald Trump, oh, this is going to get complicated, but... Basically, voter fraud. Basically, that you had these systems that were hacked into or people were dropping off fake ballots. Again, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other conspiracy theory, whole other thing that these Dominion voting systems a few days before Christmas were moved to this AT&T system. So basically, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are standing up there in their space robes, pressing the button. (laughs) I can't believe that's the first time I made a laser sound effect during this whole segment. To lightly scorch this AT&T building. And blow up a Hooters. This laser beam comes down. Because these Dominion voting systems were just moved. This is all over the conspiracy sphere. This was mentioned by a doctor, Dr. J. Edward Jones. Now, if you already know the ending of this story... I know the ending of the story, too. Don't start typing your YouTube comment yet. Dr. Jones left this comment on his Facebook page. Quote, Rumor is that AT&T got the contract to do the forensic audit on the Dominion machines. Many are being transported to the Nashville location this week. That Facebook post was before, a couple days before, the Christmas bombing. Now, because I love you guys, because this show is part of my DNA, when I saw this on this, I saw this on What Does It Matter? I don't remember the name of the website. He said it a hundred times already. What does it mean.com? It had his name and had a little profile picture of him. The name was Edward Jones. So I spent a while rolling through every Edward Jones through Facebook. I was looking for a man in a red shirt. It's like playing the most boring game of Where's Waldo. I really wanted to see if it was a real comment or if this guy existed. Because the screenshot looked like someone held a camera up and took a picture of their monitor. It was really weird. It looked off. Eventually, though, I do find Edward Jones's profile. On December 30th, he posted this. He saw the bombing. He wasn't there, but he saw it on the news, and he had this thought, quote, I wonder if this will be claimed to be a conspiracy theory related to the COVID vaccine, the election, or something new. Unquote. So he took one of his old posts uh, just a couple days before the bombing and edited it. So the date would show pre-bombing, but the message would say, rumor is that AT&T got the contract to do the forensic audits. Da, 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 da. He thought it was just a way to troll conspiracy theorists, and it worked. He became a hashtag. People began sharing it. 
People begin saying, I know this guy. He's legit. He knows what he's talking about. He's like, I, I've never met these people before. It starts trending on Twitter. It's become part of the narrative. It took me five, ten minutes. Not even. It probably took me five minutes to scroll through Facebook to find this guy. There's a conspiracy theory from Conspiracy Beer Me on Reddit that this is an alien invasion. So we go, I mean, at this point, come on, guys. It's an alien invasion. He says, Tennessee has several sites related to Space Force. And one video traces a line from the bomb site to a bizarre Pentagon-shaped plot in Brazil that the U.S. recently purchased. I went to go watch the video. It's a members-only video. So if there is an alien invasion, please, do you really need my $2.99 to watch your video or whatever you're charging? Aliens are on their way. Our money won't matter. It will be worthless. This is what I find so fascinating. And this is why I labeled this episode, Did the Nashville Bombing Tear a Hole in Our Reality? My initial assumption to this whole story, I think, was valid. It's tragedy. This guy killed himself. He may have killed somebody else. I think the fact that the vehicle was sending out the warning showed he didn't want to kill anybody. We wanted to give him time to leave the area. I think my initial assessment of it was correct. It's a tragic story. He might have had some bizarre beliefs. We don't know. We may never know. If he did, it would kind of explain certain parts of it. But in the end of the day, it was a man who killed himself. And again, another person that we know of at this time. And within days, this minor event becomes... Alien invasion, space lasers, voting fraud, within days. And there's nothing to back any of that up. To be fair, the Dominion thing, they did have that guy troll them. But the space lasers and the alien invasion stuff, the satanic backwards messaging and all that stuff, out of nothing. Out of something that happened so often in my childhood that I didn't even think it was worth covering on the show dedicated to conspiracy theorists and even true crime. I mean, I grew up in a world where people just... Bars blew up in England so often. Rolf actually sent me... Patreon supporter Rolf actually sent me a story recently about an entire neighborhood getting leveled from a fireworks factory back in the 80s or in the 90s. And the conspiracy theory was the government was actually storing landmines instead for the amount of destruction. And sorry if I'm bastardizing the story. It's been a while since I read it, but... The conspiracy theory was that they were stockpiling landmines. And it wasn't actually a fireworks factory exploding or fireworks stockpile. It leveled this neighborhood. And people weren't allowed to go in for a while and things like that. Massive explosion. But even that conspiracy theory didn't really catch on. He was telling me that there's something that some people believe. There's like a couple videos on it. It was a long time ago. It was just a story people talked about to explain this. But even that conspiracy theory is believable, right? The government government mismanagement. Most believable conspiracy theory out there. Human greed and mismanagement. The two most believable conspiracy theories. This is such a minor thing. I'm not trying to minimize the death. It's such a minor thing, and they're already trying to wrap it up into all these other conspiracy theories. And I predicted, towards the end of season 12, I predicted I think we're going to enter the golden age of conspiracy theories. I think I did, at least. (laughs) I might have edited that part out, but I think I did. I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. We're about to enter the dark age of conspiracy theories. We're about to enter a time where the big conspiracy theories are gone. Sure, Flat Earth is going to stick around because it's funny. I think a lot of people believe in it because it's contrarian. But the big conspiracy theories, we had a good run. We had a good run. From JFK to Christmas Day, December 2020. We had a good run. But I think from now on, every little tiny event is going to be wrapped in these stupid conspiracy theories. Directed energy weapons, sure, they exist. I'm not denying that. You can't go, well, no, here's this. I'm not, see, and that's the thing. You can fight the little things, but do I believe that a space laser scorched the street 
to hit a couple Dominion voting boxes. They don't even they weren't even in there. They weren't even in there. So now you have to go back to the NSA thing. And if you have a space laser coming down, why are you hitting something that knocks 911 calls offline for a, a day or two? We're entering the dark ages of conspiracy theories. We are entering an age where the most minor event is going to be wrapped up in these major storylines. I think part of it is people need the narrative to continue. People need the storyline to continue. And I think the big conspiracy theories are getting wrapped up. The plots are ending. It's season seven. Things are getting wrapped up. COVID is on its way out. The vaccine's on its way. And that the vaccine obviously has its whole host of conspiracy theories We've talked about those before. One of my episodes got taken off of Spotify, even though this show talks about how ridiculous those conspiracy theories are. The algorithm didn't care. They took it off. But like I said, this episode is not going to be on the, on YouTube for long, but that storyline's getting wrapped up. The QAnon storyline, it's it's getting wrapped up. It's It's done. The Great Reset tried to replace it. It didn't really catch on because it was just kind of this... Stupid thing that people have been talking about since I was a kid, how they want to reshape the world in there. That that conspiracy theory has been going around since zero AD. That a, rich people want to reshape the world and how they see it. That that's not a that's such an old conspiracy theory. It's wrapped up in new paper. It's the Great Reset. Here you guys go buy my book. It's only twelve ninety nine to learn more about this conspiracy theory. That's been popping up on every political divide, like every political group, every rich person and poor person. Anyone with half a brain wants to reshape the world in their image. It's not even conspiracy theory. That's actually falling apart. I was checking the Google Trends for it. It's already dropping off. It peaked right after the election, which is what I predicted was going to happen. People needed a new storyline, but it's dumb. The big conspiracy theories are done. I mean, barring some sort of massive catastrophe, the big storylines are done. So you're going to have these conspiracy theorists, these people who really believe in this stuff. They need to keep the narrative continuing, so they're going to find... Think about how much this episode... I've talked now for 40 minutes, barring the ghost story and the hospital stuff in the beginning. I've talked for 40 minutes about this event. And this may end up being one of the... That that alone makes it one of the longest conspiracy theories I've ever talked about. And at the end of the day, an RV blew up and two people died. And in eight days, this has become a 40-minute episode. If I edited out all the hospital stuff, 40 minutes at this point. Might even be longer. We're in the dark ages of conspiracy theories. And people are going to find the most minor things and wrap them up in this stuff. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a great show. Not necessarily going to say it's brilliant, but it is, it's a really good show. If you're not familiar with it, it's about, about a vampire slayer named Buffy. She fights vampires. She fights vampire kings. She fights a man trying to achieve ascension and become a true demon. 80 foot long snake. The government builds a weapon of war out of demon parts. That's actually one of my favorite seasons. I know a lot of people didn't like it. They're trying to weaponize demons. Secret societies. Gov- a really cool like season with that. Season 5, Buffy fights a literal god and kills herself to save the universe. Now by season 6, because she comes back to life, of course. Season 6, she's fighting three of her former high school compatriots. One is amazing with technology. One is magical one like no spells and the other one can control demons they're all dorks they're all a bunch of losers but sunnydale i know this is getting into the weeds but we're gonna this actually has something to do with the ending here sunnydale sits on this place where there's just constant paranormal activity going on so these three kids have kind of picked and they were introduced throughout the previous five seasons just one-off characters doing their thing Season six, though, the three of them team up and they become the main villains of season six. Now, in season six, there's an episode where she gets attacked by a demon that these kids are controlling. And it injects her with a venom that brings her into the real world. And she's locked in a mental institution. 
There's a psychiatrist there, and Buffy's parents are there. And throughout the episode, she's flashing in and out. Sometimes she's in the mental hospital. Sometimes she's in the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And the psychiatrist is explaining to Buffy and explaining to her parents that for the past six years, Buffy has been in a world where she is a vampire slayer. She has superhuman abilities and she is constantly fighting the forces of evil. It's a delusion. None of those things exist. She's just a young girl lost in her own mind. And in that episode, the psychiatrist says, The delusion is starting to break down. Buffy, you know that things aren't right, even in your own head. You used to fight gods and monsters, and now you're fighting three high school kids who were losers. Now they're your main enemy. That's where we're at in the conspiracy world. We used to fight gods and monsters. The death of presidents, man's most magnificent technological achievement, faked on a movie soundstage. The president of the United States allowing or orchestrating the attacks on the World Trade Center. Gods and monsters. But those days are over. There will be other events. There will be, unfortunately, big events that happen that will be wrapped in conspiracy theories. But from here on out, even the most minute disturbance of normal life will be heralded as a clue in a puzzle that someone is trying to sell you. 2020 seemed like the ultimate year for conspiracy theory. So much happened. But it turns out it ended with an explosion in Nashville, Tennessee. The golden age of conspiracy theories isn't beginning. It just ended. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. I'm glad I'm back, baby. Have a great one, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.